Hi ladies, are you ready to say goodbye to winter? I know I am. So today I'm sharing 17 spring apple body shape hacks for women to look thinner. If you're new here, I'm Kathy. I'm 54 years old and my channel is all about helping women to feel and look their very best. I concentrate a lot of my fashion videos on an apple shape and plus size because that is my body type, but a lot of my style tips really is good for any woman. So I'm so excited that spring is coming. That means I can ditch my winter coat and boots and I can wear more vibrant colors and short sleeves. I'm just so tired of being cooped up and having to wrap up in big bulky clothes. So today I thought it would be fun to share some style hacks for us apple shaped women so that we look great in our spring clothes. So one of the things as an apple shaped woman that I always try to do is make myself look thinner. I want to detract from my belly area because that is where I carry the bulk of my weight. So the tips and tricks that I'm sharing in this video are things that I use whenever I want to hide my belly. So the way I always think of it whenever I'm getting dressed is I want to be boring in the middle and bring interest up top or down to my legs. Because if you're an apple body shape, you have more rounded shoulders, you have a bigger chest, and the bulk of your weight is in your belly area. When you're a plus size apple, you have all of that, but you can have, you know, a little more fluff added here and there. But typically an apple shape has uh, nice arms, nice legs. So we want to play up those areas of our body. And one of the things that I always like to do is to wear a v-neck because it makes this area longer and it brings the attention upwards away from the belly area. So an apple shape can appear top heavy due to having rounded shoulders, a bigger chest and a fuller midsection. So let's get into the spring style hacks that I have for you. Before we start with any fashion, I always like to remind people that it is so important to start with a good foundation. And by that, I mean, make sure that you are wearing a proper fitting bra and remember that you have to adjust the straps whenever you put it on. You just have to fiddle with it a bit because you wanna pull the girls up. I like to get a bra fitting at least once a year, but if you lose or gain weight, it's also recommended that you get a bra fitting because your size may change. Also, if you've had surgery, your size could change. But typically, I like to go once a year and it's really surprising. You know, I have went into a bra fitting thinking that I knew what my size was and I've come out and I'm told different size. Always adjust the straps. And I don't know if this is true or not, but I don't like to wear the same bra every day. I read that you're supposed to give it a rest, but like I said, is that true? I don't know. So it's nice to have a few on rotation. Now, I really don't talk a lot about shapewear on my channel because I don't like it. However, I do plan on doing an underwear video coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'm just right in the process of planning things out and looking at um, some brands, not so much shapewear that can uh, be smoothing. So be on the lookout for that. Okay, so we have our foundation figured out. We got our nice bra on, our undies on. So now the next thing we wanna talk about is fabric. We want soft, flowy fabrics that drape over our body. We just want them to fall beautifully over our curves. We don't wanna wear anything that's too tight or too uh, clingy, and we also don't wanna wear anything that's too baggy. So we kinda of want something that fits us just right. So some of the fabrics that are nice for spring and summer are linen, rayon, there's probably others that I'm missing. But I know for myself, I have a pair of linen pants, and I have to say they are flattering. I really like them. And you can see them here. I bought them at Old Navy a couple of years ago, but I know that they do have some newer ones in for this year and I will link everything below that I mention. Now let's talk about dresses. A wrap dress is my absolute favorite. A wrap dress is so so flattering for us apple shaped bodies and why is that? Because typically our waistline is not defined so a wrap dress usually wraps underneath the chest and it usually ties on the side or sometimes in the back, but it just gives us a fake waist 
and it brings attention upwards to our chest so therefore we're detracting from the belly area also an empire waist and an a-line dress so a wrap dress wraps around the body usually ties on the side i prefer a faux wrap uh, which you can just pull over your head. I don't feel comfortable wearing a wrap dress that you actually have to tie to make it a wrap. I don't know. I'm just weird that way. I sometimes feel maybe if I don't do the tie right, it'll get undone and then I'll be like embarrassed and naked. I don't know. So I always look for a faux wrap or a faux wrap dress. An empire waist has a fitted bodice that ends just under the chest. So it, it creates the illusion of a waist. So I'm going to try and do a spring dress video probably in April because it's still too early for me here. Like we still have three feet of snow on the ground, but be on the lookout for a spring dress video. And another uh, dress is the A-line dress. It's flattering for an apple shape because it's fitted on the top and flares out at the bottom. So anytime we're bigger in the middle, when you get to the bottom, it's best if you have like a little bit of a flare on the bottom, whether it's a dress or a pant. You can still wear skinny jeans if you want to wear them. If you're looking for some tips and tricks on how to proportion your body out, it's better if you have a little bit of a flare at the bottom. So the next thing I wanna talk about are tops. Wrap tops and full wrap tops, like I said about dresses, very, very flattering. You can see in this picture of this wrap dress for me, it's very flattering, brings attention to my bust, makes it look like I have a waist underneath my chest. The fabric just skims over my belly. And actually this dress I bought on Amazon. I don't buy much on Amazon with the way of clothing, but I have to tell you, this is a very nice dress for Amazon. If you can get a top with ruching, ruching is another thing that I find very flattering on me. You can have the ruching like right underneath the bust, which basically is just gathering little folds of fabric. Or if you have ruching along the sides, that brings interest to the sides. So ruching near the chest makes your waist look smaller. In tops, you want to avoid high necklines. By high le necklines, I mean the kind, you know, that would like come up to here. As you can see, I don't have a long neck. So that's why I always have like a double chin. Hopefully as I lose my 50 pounds, I lose the chin as well. That's why I like to open up this area because it almost like creates, you know, some space here, makes it me kind of look like I have a little bit of a neck. But I always like to wear a V-neck, also a scoop neck, a cowl neck. Sometimes a boat neck can be flattering. But if you wear a high neck, it can actually make your chest look smaller and it'll just make like your head is just like sitting on top of the top that you're wearing. Another thing to keep in mind when you're shopping for your clothes for spring are look for tops or dresses that have a print, but beware of prints. Don't go for really big prints because they can have the opposite effect and make us look larger. So you always want to opt for like a smaller print. And I have shown you all kinds of tops that I've had and dresses that have um, small prints on them because they really do help to camouflage the belly area. And especially if you can find a dress that has a small print on it and if it's a wrap dress, my goodness, you are going to look amazing and so slim. Now, we wanna talk about necklines for an apple-shaped body. Like I said, I prefer a V-neck, a scoop neck. There's also square necks and a sweetheart neck. All of these necklines open up the upper chest area, drawing attention upwards and away from our belly. So you might also want to wear like some nice dangling earrings, some nice hoop earrings, um, even like a small dainty necklace. Have to be careful with jewelry. We're going to get into that later on, but the, those are some other tips. Okay, this next one I know is controversial, but I'm just delivering the news. Uh, you can wear whatever you like. I have worn capris in the past, and I admit, yeah, they, they're great in the summer, but I also have to admit they're not the greatest look because the capri pant cuts me right in the middle of my shin, and that is the largest part of the lower leg. You have to think of your legs in sections, like your thigh and then your knee down to your ankle as another section. So think of that as if you were dressing your upper body. So you want to detract from your belly. So I want to detract from my shin. 
So you could go with a crop pant or you could go with an ankle pant. I know some people don't like crop pants, but I find those are the two options that look a lot better on us apple shapes rather than um, a capri. But like I said, wear what you want. I'm just telling you um, what all the experts say looks best for us apple shapes. So next month, hopefully I can start ordering in some nice spring clothes and I can model a bunch for you. Now, the next yeah. thing we want to do is we want to avoid any clothing that's baggy. And I get it, I am guilty of this and I'm trying to do better. I know having a larger belly, sometimes I just feel like I wanna, you know, camouflage it and I'll wear like a baggy shirt or, you know, a coat that's too big. I'm not doing myself any favors because it's not actually helping make me look smaller, it's making me look larger. So you, it's really important not to hide behind baggy clothing. And coming out of winter, you know, where we've had to wear layers and heavy coats, it's sometimes hard after, you know, wearing winter clothing the next day it seems anymore we go from having the furnace on to the air conditioning so it can be a big shock for those of us that live in colder climates to switch out from heavy baggier clothes in the winter to more sleeker lines in the spring and summer and you also want to avoid clothing that's too tight so it's kind of like was it goldilocks and the three bears we just have to find what is perfect for us don't want to look like a sausage. We want our clothes just to skim over our natural curves. And if we have any lumps or bumps, we don't want to bring attention to that. And if we wear too tight of clothing, that's what it's going to do. Okay, if you like stripes, this is your year. Stripes are everywhere this spring. And actually, I'm wearing a stripe and actually a faux pas. But we're going to get into that in a minute. Wear vertical stripes because they are the most flattering and if you are short, vertical stripes are going to give you length. So if you can wear like a vertical stripe in a top or a vertical stripe in these linen pants, um, they're actually going to help you look slimmer because they're drawing the eye up and down, which is detracting from our apple shape. Avoid horizontal stripes. By horizontal stripes, I'm talking about stripes larger than the ones that I'm wearing. I took a gamble with this because I'm always preaching don't wear stripes, horizontal stripes. But actually, I kind of felt that this was going to work for me and I'm right, this is a flattering top. Why is it flattering? For a couple of reasons. It has a V-neck, it has smocking here, which I really didn't like a month ago, remember my Chico's howl? And then the stripes are very, very fine. This is gonna look great for spring, but I see myself wearing my jean jacket over it or even like a navy sweater. It is going to look great. Let me just stand up and show it to you. It's available in a lot of different colors. Um, see what I mean about wearing clothes that just fit you right? Like I could probably have sized down because it's a bit big in the shoulders, but if I would have sized down, it would have been too tight and you would see my rolls. Whereas this just drapes, you know, over. It just falls over my chest and just drapes properly. So I would definitely stay away from large or medium sized horizontal stripes because that's not going to look nice, at least not on me. A tiny horizontal stripe. I don't know if I'd wear a dress with a tiny horizontal stripe, although I do have my eye on one at Talbot's and I'm thinking I could maybe wear it with a denim jacket, but I'm thinking right now I probably wouldn't feel my best in it. So you have to find whatever feels the best for you, whatever you feel comfortable in, because whenever you feel comfortable, you're confident in your clothing and you're going to exude that confidence. The next style tip that we need to think about when we're shopping for our clothes this spring are look at the sleeves. Uh, you want to avoid tight fitting sleeves because they are not uh, going to be your friend because our arms are right beside our problem area. So anytime people are looking at us and our arms are beside us and if we have really tight sleeves on, it just kind of makes the whole body look like rounder. So I would recommend three quarter length sleeves, although I'm not really a big fan of them. But the reason why they work is because um, you're showing some skin. So it gives the eye a break so whenever it's looking at you if your hands are you know down by your side it automatically is drawn to your 
bare skin. I would dress up the wrists then with maybe a watch or some bracelets to bring some added uh, detail into the outfit. Like I have found out this year, smock sleeves are actually flattering for us apple shapes. Uh, as long as there's not a lot of like ruffles or frills, because if you have a lot of them, that can add bulk. The smocking on here, on this top, it just creates a tiny little ruffle, which is very feminine looking. And there's also a little bit of a ruffle on the shoulder. Very, very flattering. My arms aren't toned, but I don't mind showing them, but I know a lot of women like to cover them up. So that's why I also like the idea of a sleeve that, you know, almost goes to the elbow. I find that's a great way to hide this area if you're not comfortable showing it. Another thing I wanna mention are shoulder pads. Because we have like bigger rounded shoulders, sometimes we can end up looking like a linebacker, like a football player, like we're all round. But if you have a shoulder pad, actually it brings your body into proportion. Look at this top, it kind of like gives the effect of a little bit of height here. So see if I had a shoulder pad on, just the difference, like you see like the roundness of my shoulder, but if I had the shoulder pad on here, it, like it, it extends the shoulder. So whenever I was standing up, it would make me look a little wider on the top of my shoulders. So it would make my belly look like it's tapered in. We're trying to create like an hourglass look. So if you have the shoulder pads on the top and say you're wearing like a boot cut or an A-line skirt, it's kind of faking an hourglass shape. So just try and keep those tips in mind. Okay, this next one is controversial. To tuck or not to tuck. I, I <laughs> okay, this is uh, one of those things where I'm going to tell you not to tuck your top in, and here is why. If you tuck your top in, it's going to cut your body right in the middle. It's gonna like scream, look at me here. If you don't tuck your top in, the fabric in your top just drapes over your belly. So it's more flattering. There's a few things to keep in mind. You wanna make sure that your top is long enough. And I like my tops to fall at my lower hip. I don't like it when they are shorter and they fall just below the belly button at the top of the hip. That doesn't work for me because I still have a belly underneath my belly button. We have to think of ways to just kind of camouflage that. Now, if you want to tuck, like say I will tuck my t-shirt in, my shorts in the summertime, but I do it in a way that I pull a lot of the material out in front so I'm making like an unhappy face or an upside down U, and that can be flattering. As a rule of thumb, if you have like an apple shape or a bigger belly, don't tuck your top and be mindful of the length of your top and also the fabric of your top because you want all those things to come together and you're really gonna look really nice and put together. So you want to avoid tops that end just below the belly at the top of the hip. We need a longer top for an, our apple shape because if your top ends at the top of the hip, you're gonna show your lower belly, but it's also going to make your upper body look bigger as well. We want to avoid like the plague crop tops. <laughs> I'm just putting that on here, but oh, I, I could not wear that because my muffin top would be out and I wouldn't want to scare everybody. And another tip for tops, in, avoid embellishments. Remember at the beginning of the video, I said we want to be boring in the middle, but we want to bring attention like up top or down below. You know, you could have um, nice details here, but right in the middle, I might as well put like a bullseye on my belly and say like, you know, look at my belly. So I always try to wear a solid or something that is going to camouflage. Another thing you could do is wear like a long open front cardigan, a lightweight cardigan, if you're not comfortable um, just wearing just a top by itself. That makes me think I wanna go back when we talked about the neckline for an apple body some of you may not like wearing a v-neck or you can't wear a v-neck. A suggestion that I would like to make is you could wear like a camisole underneath it. So, you know, it maybe stops about here, just as long as it's not cutting you like right here at the neck. Even say if you wanted to wear a necklace, 
You could wear a necklace, but again, be mindful of where it ends. I know on myself, if it falls below my chest, it's gonna sit right on my belly. So if I was wearing a necklace, I probably would only go to like in between my two boobs. I wouldn't go any lower than that because that's just gonna bring the wrong attention. So if you can't wear a V-neck, you could try those tips. Or if you're a sewer, or you know a sewer, if you have like a crew neck, you could always maybe have them put a notch in just to make like a tiny little V. It doesn't have to be like a deep plunging V. Uh, you can see in this top that I'm wearing, it has like a tiny V and that gives me, you know, the same effect of having a V-neck. Now we're gonna talk about pants. For myself, what I find works best are high-waisted. I did a jeans video where I demonstrated low-waisted, mid-rise, and high-rise. The only one that looks good on my particular body is the high-waisted because I like to have a pant that is has a rise of nine inches. Now I realize some of you are short to torso, but you have longer legs, I'm the opposite. So a mid-rise might work better for you, but I would definitely stay away from a low rise. I think uh, those work best on very tall, slim people. But if we have like any uh, roundness in our belly area, it's not flattering because what they will do is roll down and then you'll get like a muffin top or rolls hanging out over them. So for me, I always look for a high rise like for myself, a nine inch, but if you could get one like a seven inch, I don't know if that's considered a mid or a high. Um, you just have to find what works best for you. But definitely, I think for all apple body shapes, definitely stay away from a low rise. Look for flowing pants. Like spring and summer is a great time to wear some nice flowy uh, linen pants like these uh, ones I'm showing. Um, the Palazzo pants are nice in the spring. And they're nice because they're wider in the bottom. So it, you know, creates that hourglass shape. You want to avoid pants that have pleats in the front. You want pants basically that are very uh, flat in the front. Pockets are okay, but I wouldn't go with big pockets. I wouldn't go with any embellishments. Just look for flat in the front pants. And as far as the cut, I would go with a boot cut, flowy, flare, or wide leg, but I will tell you on myself, I do not like a wide leg. I'm five foot four, I have a 27 inch inseam, I've tried wide leg pants, they're just too much for me. So, you know, these are suggestions, they're not written in stone, like you don't have to follow these rules, they're kind of just suggestions that when you're shopping you can think, oh yes, like let me try one of these cuts. So when I'm shopping for pants, I look for no embellishments. I look for a flat front and high rise, or at least a really good mid rise. So you have to figure out for yourself uh, which one works the best for you. Now skirts, they can be very flattering for an apple shape if they are the right length of skirt. Again, you want your skirt length to hit right above the knee, right on the knee, or just above where the calf starts. I don't like skirts that cut me right in the middle. And sometimes it's difficult to find skirts that don't. I can't really comment on how maxi skirts look on me because I've never worn one, but I think they can be flattering, but I would just keep in mind if you're petite, go for a maxi skirt that say falls just above your shoe. So like at the bottom of the ankle, I wouldn't have it touching the floor because I just, I don't think that would be like a good look for an apple shape. I am going to try and find some skirts and see if we can style them. I'm not really a skirt person. I would rather wear a dress because I just find, if I find a skirt, like my belly is so big in the middle that I feel when I'm wearing a skirt, I almost have to like hike it up. So it's like underneath my chest. Because if I wear it where I'm supposed to wear it at my natural waist, it just doesn't feel right and I don't find that it looks right. So I'm going to be trying some skirts and see if I can find some that will look good on us apple shapes. But I think the most important tip that I can give you is wear what you feel the most comfortable in, wear what gives you confidence. Because whenever you feel good in your clothes, you're going to exude confidence. And that is the most important thing. 
All of these style tips, they're just tips. They're not like written in stone. You can use them if you want to, because I know that I use them and they do help me to look a little bit better. They're not going to erase the fact that I have a big belly, but they help me to camouflage it and present myself in such a way that I feel confident. And I think when you feel confident, you smile, and it just lightens up the mood and you know, people are drawn to you then. Just remember, if you see me wearing my t-shirt tucked in with black sandals, don't call the fashion police. I haven't went mad. Like I said, these are just tips that you can follow if you want to. You don't have to adhere to them 100% of the time. And if you haven't seen my video about 16 amazing spring 2023 fashion trends that plus size women over 50 must try i'll go meet you over at that video because oh my gosh there's some really nice spring fashion trends for us ladies that i think are going to be so so flattering so i'll meet you over at that video remember to thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet bye